Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another Historical Humans Reacts and in today's episode we're going to be talking about Europe's prehistoric mega settlements, how they were almost exclusively vegetarian, how these mega settlements relied on fertilizer and plant proteins to survive. Yep, Ooh. that's right. That's right. It's the uh, it's the vegan prehistoric peoples. <laughs> oh no, we're about to awaken that crowd. Yeah. Uh, so the mega settlements in particular uh, belong to the uh, Tripilia societies, which existed about 6,000 years ago in Moldova and Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and uh, these uh, societies constructed uh, settlements that took up about 790 acres apiece. Uh, That's huge. They're they're often argued to be the earliest cities in Europe. Uh, however, they would not have been a uh, densely urbanized uh, environment. Uh, just sort of just massive, you know, rows of, you know, single family, uh, like almost suburban houses kind of kind of living arrangements. Well, in the, the thing that happened here that I find very interesting and that you see across the world is these civilizations start sprouting larger settlements and cities after the invention of agriculture and large-scale agriculture because now they're able to rely more heavily on plants and they rely less as much on hunting and gathering. They will still supplement their diets with that, but once we see that shift into cultivation, you can actually start seeing the effects of that on the humans, and that's part of what this article actually discusses is the the nitrogen levels inside the humans you're actually able to look at and to see um, what their diets predominantly consisted of if you have larger numbers of uh, nitrogen in your system it's more than likely you're eating um, high protein plant based uh, materials versus if you have large amount of carbon which would yeah. be more ac akin to um, animals yes Animal, animal production. Yeah, animals have carbon. Way too much carbon. <laughs> and that is reflected in what you eat to the point of you can actually see where someone is originally from by looking at their carbon and nitrogen levels in their teeth because it relates to the part of the world to where they were born. However, yeah. you can see where someone lived for most of their life based on the carbon and nitrogen in their diet. Yeah, a lot definitely. of fascinating studies that can happen to the human body. Yeah, and one of the fun things building on like your earlier point of like you know agriculture is in order to feed the number of people that logically would have to live here, even at like the minimum population density for a seven hundred and ninety acre city, <laughs> um, would require a uh, very much sophisticated uh, both agriculture and pasture management because uh, it's not it's not just the growing plants it's you know keeping all the sheep and the goats and the other things to supplement your diet and you know get yourself wool and cheese and all that good stuff well and that's exactly what we start seeing because now they're starting to produce more calories per acre by using a combination of plant cultivation and animal husbandry and you're able to see a healthier um, more production of food and the labor intensive hours, the resource consuming production of meat was effectively gone. You didn't have to go on these week on these multi multi day hunts, these week long hunts trying to get food or having to go out multiple times to do it. When, you know, a couple of times a day you throw some grain that you were growing to your animals and now you've got both, you've got the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah, the interlinking is really shown in uh, the pea straw, because uh, one of the primary uh, agricultural components of this site was peas, and uh, the parts of the pea that the humans don't eat is great for feeding uh, cattle and sheep and all sorts of animals that you need to keep alive, all the grazing animals that you would ever want. They love that stuff. I mean, a lot of animals that farmers raise today are what they refer to as natural garbage disposals like chickens will eat pretty much anything and they will eat it well same with pigs i mean you throw it to them they eat all the scraps the leftover food that you don't use 
you know, the peels from your dinner, the extra bits left over, they'll de they'll just devour it. And it's notorious for eating everything. And it's it's zero waste, zero waste, which is incredible. And this is something you see throughout the course of history that is very interesting to me is the point of cultivation means that the calorie output outweighs the amount of people that need to work. So you start seeing a surplus in labor, which that starts translating to a more specialization of skills. You start seeing people focusing in non-food related production skills, such as blacksmithing. You see metal development, you see administration, you see the development of larger scale societies, the, the complex um, societal structures that, er that arise from it. You got carpentry, pottery, art, writing. Um, music the really... concept of government <laughs> yeah all of these are a byproduct of farmers yeah so you know give a farmer a hug today if you if you like all that stuff but it really is like this is truly the the genesis moment of civilizations and it's something that we see across the world it's not unique to any one part of the world everywhere in the world there are places where food and crops proliferate to a point where people start doing large-scale agriculture i mean yeah, and, the bread and basket like, in the middle east yeah there, there there's there's hundreds of places that uh that have um you know that that do this and have it uh all on an industrial scale what makes uh this site unique and why we are talking about uh tripilia is because the i guess we would call urban center uh, for it gets so big so early um and that's why it's called the ancient mega city because it's just yeah we got 790 acres of just humans well and humans as far as the eye can see and scientists say that it's one of the earliest cities in europe mm -hmm. there there's more definitive statements that were made in this article but though you tend not to make that definitive but they have carbon dated it they have actually validated it and it is one of the oldest cities in europe so it truly is a thing to behold and just the size scale and complexity is what sets it apart even though it may not be the first one it's definitely a very impressive one and it's cool to see information like this actually start coming out and be pr published and produced and just you know seeing something get this big this early into like humanity figuring out the cycle of agriculture is you know is always very fun to see and it's very exciting that, that we, we like places like this just because it's you know it's just proven that like no humanity had a formula it's the birth <laughs> and it of was humanity. the same yeah and it was about the same everywhere and you can get really big off it really quick the interesting thing here, too, and they do highlight this, is this is one of the rare instances where you see animal husbandry and farming proliferate at roughly the same time. So not only did they master one form, they mastered it both. Yeah. You, usually uh, usually societies end up prioritizing one over the other based on the environment to which they have access. If you live in a rocky, mountainous region, you will prioritize animal husbandry over large-scale farming. <laughs> if you live somewhere where it... Uh, like uh, Ukraine or Moldova over here, where you have frequent rain seasons and frequent dry seasons, you might prioritize farming. Here they were able to prioritize both because they just had the land for it. The breadbasket of Europe. Yep. But that's a great point for us to wrap up. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, and check out our other videos. Peace.